Hey everybody, this is going to be part three of the galaxy. I thought there was only going to be two parts of the galaxy, but this is part three. The problem is, is the galaxy power front disc brakes that I installed, the car does not make enough vacuum. It has a big camshaft in it. It's only producing like 14 inches of vacuum at an idle. When you rev it up, it does go up to 20. And then you get like one good apply on the brakes powered and then after that there's no more power brakes and all over the instructions it says you have to have a minimum of 18 inches vacuum in order for this power booster to work so what we decided to do is we decided to go ahead and put a vacuum pump in i have got this vacuum pump off of amazon um this pump has a very good review it is said, I thought it was for a Ford, but it's not. It is actually for a Volvo, Camaro, or a Cadillac. There is the part number on it from Amazon. So I bought a vacuum pump from Amazon. Then when we were on Amazon, I needed a way to run this. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a Bosch-style relay. Um, I was able to buy the Bosch-style relay and the connector. I was able to get one two three four five six relays and six connectors and six little relay holders for cheap once again amazon then we needed a vacuum switch so when the vacuum drops below a certain amount it'll kick the pump on now i thought this was a two wire switch where i could just take and wire it in line so when it needed to come on it would come on but that's not the way it is this is actually a single pole switch so we're going to have to wire this up and this is grounded so this needs to be grounded to the car all right uh what else do I, what else did i get i think that's really about it so what we're going to do is i have i have gone online and found a wire diagram on how to wire it so basically you've got ground here ground and ground so this is your trigger going over to relay number 85 which this is going to be the trigger so when the vacuum drops below a certain amount this will kick the pump on the vacuum pump will be grounded and then the vacuum pump will be getting its power from terminal 87 of the Bosch style relay and then we're not even going to be using 87a and now 86 and 30 are going to be positive so we can run positive on both of those from the same wire through a 30 amp fuse to a switched power and then to the battery so that is the wire diagram on how to wire the relay up for a ground trigger so i'll leave this up on the screen so you all can um, need to stop you can stop so this is how you're going to have to wire it so uh, this is 16 gauge wire. I already pulled this back. I do not have another connector for this So we're just going to lob that connector off. I do believe what we're going to do is we're going to The only problem that I see about this pump is that these don't extend to the bottom I don't want to drill a hole that big in the guy's galaxy So I think what we're going to do is we're going to have to get some very long standoff bolts to stand it up off the um, inner fender well, so I think I'm going to run the relay here. Let me go ahead and get some of the stuff wired and I'll show you what we're going to do. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lob this connector off. The black wire is going to go to ground. The red wire is going to go right to the relay. Now, unfortunately, I only have blue and white wire. I have no black. I have no red. So um, I'll go ahead and use the white wire as a ground because white for trailers is ground and I'll use this as the power wire coming from some type of ignition switch. I do not have a fuse holder yet. I still need to get a fuse holder, but all this stuff is available on Amazon. Um, so let me go ahead and get it wired. And after we get it wired, I'll show you basically what it's going to look like. All righty, so what I've done is I've, I'm, do you believe I'm just going to mount the relay right there next to the pump so we're going to go ahead and cut this connector off because we don't need this connector I'll save a little bit of wire sticking out just in case I need to use this for something else I'll throw it in my toolbox 
So now we'll pull this wire off here. And the red wire is going to run over and go to to power up the relay. I mean to get power from the relay. So let me go ahead and cut this back a little bit. We'll go ahead and strip the wire. This is supposed to be a 16 gauge. Oh, there we go. And then I have a whole assortment of wire connectors. So we'll go ahead and use that. And I always like using the uninsulated terminal crimpers on these because it just seems like it crimps the wire so good. Okay, so here's something else. What I'm going to do later, I don't have it. This is a piece of heat shrink tubing. So on here, what I'll do is I'll get a bigger piece of heat shrink tubing. Um, and I always, will, what I do is I slide this over top of my connectors. Like I said, see, this one's actually a little too small. And then I can heat shrink it and cut it off so the wires won't touch each other. So this one here, we have the vacuum pump. We need to go to 87. 87 is this top terminal. So I'll just go ahead and we'll plug that one into there. Hey, look, we're, we're, we're almost done. Look at that. I probably should have left that wire a little bit longer. Oh, well. This wire here will just go to chassis ground someplace. So go ahead and strip this wire. 16 gauge. And do we have... That's one thing I don't like about these sets is see how small that is I'd really like to have like that that size or this size in a blue you know but I guess I'll just have to roll with this one for now so go ahead and this is going to go to chassis ground nope that's right it's this way I guess I have to Okay, so there's that. Oh, what am I doing? I wanted to use this. So anyway, I got ahead of myself. I wanted to really to use this connector, so in case the relay goes bad, you just unplug the connector and you don't have to worry about this. So this was kind of a waste of time because I got ahead of myself. So let's uh, disconnect this wire here. And I would really like to use this connector. So let's see, it plugs in like that. So now these two need to be connected. Not a problem. Let's go ahead and cut it. And where are I? I have these new fangled. Uh, melting connectors. They're weatherproof, so I think we're going to try to use these. Oh, I just spilt them all over the place. So, will this fit through here? Yeah. I want to do a video on how these work. Um, I'll just give you the general idea of how these work. So these have a solder ring inside. So what you do is you go ahead and take your two wires and you wrap them together. We don't have that many torch out here, do we? No, I think I'm gonna have to go get it. All right, it's in my room. All right, and then you slide your wires back through until this is in the center like that. Now you're supposed to heat this with a 1500 watt heat gun, but what I have found out is the heat gun will melt the solder, but it doesn't get the wires hot enough inside to make the solder stick to the wires and you can just pull the wires apart. So now that we have this together, we need a little micro, I use a, one of those little butane micro torches to heat that up. Um, we'll have to go get one. So 
actually there's the first wire that's connected so now we just need to go continue on with connecting the wires um, let me see this wire oh 87 is going to be the power wire so for the uh, system so we're going to tie these two wires together was it the red and the white the red and the white are going to be the power into the relays so we'll just go ahead and connect them together and like i said i don't have a fuse holder yet but we're going to put a fuse in here and then that's going to get run to the ignition switch for power to power up this relay so there is those two wires taken care of. So now this wire is going to be the trigger wire that's going to come out of here. So we need to figure out this is going to be, the power booster is going to be in this area. The pump's going to be on the fender well. So this is going to need to be on the fender well. So the vacuum line comes out of here into this and then around to the, um, um, to the vacuum line well, I guess it doesn't matter I just have to make sure that this thing I guess I could just go ahead and hook this right into here and not worry about splicing anything and then my rubber line will just go into here and I can just fasten that to the firewall so I think that's what I'm going to do this this thing did come with its own connectors Oh man, those things are oh, they're very tiny. tiny. They're tiny, but luckily the trigger wire is very small. So so where's this piece? So this piece. So is it gonna go? There's no instructions, of course. So this is this is the. Uh, that's right. It goes. I know which way it goes. This is your your weather barrier right here. So go ahead and slide the weather barrier on down. And then that weather barrier is supposed to slide up and go over top of this connector. I really don't have the right tools to crimp this connector, but we'll we'll take and fudge it. There we go. Let's cut some of this wire off. I actually, I might solder this wire so I don't have any problem. So now that is going to go there like this. And see, this is actually supposed to be up here. And then if I do it that way, it's not going to work right. Let me pull this back. Usually this seal is put underneath this but I don't there's not enough room for it so we'll go ahead and we'll hook this here we'll bend this onto the insulation and we'll bend that one onto the insulation so now all we have to do is bend this on to the wire. Actually, that looks pretty good. It's so hard to pick it up, but yeah, I know. <sighs> I still think I'm going to come back and put a drop of solder on that. Now this will go into this connector and then plug in to here, but I can go ahead and just plug it in here to mock it up. So there, that so that's going to be plugged into there, like so. So that's our vacuum switch to activate the pump on and off. So, da, da, do, do, do. so let's see what else we have. The ground trigger, we have the vacuum pump wired, we have these two wires together. Um, so we have the ground, okay, so we have 
pods have gone into the vacuum pump. This is going to be grounded. This is grounded, so this is going to be the ground trigger for the relay. These two wires together, so actually the yellow wire here, we do not even need this yellow wire. So basically, that's how it's going to be wired in the car. Um, this is going to go to the ignition switch. There's going to be a fuse here. This wire is unused. This is going to be grounded. This will be grounded. So when the vacuum pump needs to come on, this will ground the relay. The relay will activate and turn the power onto the vacuum pump and activate the vacuum pump. So, um, I guess I'll just leave it here. So basically I've got most of the wiring done. I'll remove the yellow wire because I don't need the yellow wire. And, um, we will finish wiring it when we go out to put it on the car. Um, now, are you sure you don't want an on-off switch to run into this, maybe? No, because, that, because uh, it's not the way this relay works. Okay. It's gonna. This this is gonna be power. So when he cuts the, when he turn when you turn the key on, it's gonna it'll, be on. It'll provide power to this, and then this whole system will work. When you cut the key off, it'll shut the power to this, so it won't run when the car is not on. Okay, cool. Alrighty, so I've started the. Oh, forgot to show you about this thing. So we have our butane lighter. They say you're supposed to use a um, heat gun, but like I said, the heat gun doesn't seem like it gets the wires hot enough. So we're going to go ahead and just, I'm going to go ahead and hit the end pieces to get them starting to melt. And then hit the solder piece. And as you can see, the... Uh, solder has just melted and melted into the wires so now I'm just going to go around the rest of it and melt it down now that is also waterproof because these things really melt on the wires and that solder penetrated the uh, the wires really good I, you can't use a heat gun you've got to use one of these mini, mini um, butane torches I don't know why I didn't like that time but yeah. anyway all right so wanted to show you that come back and show you that real quick and um, we're gonna get this wire soldered up and then hopefully we'll put it on the car and come back and show you with the whole thing Wiring installed. process on this I'm gonna solder up this wire put that connector on there and um, then we'll go ahead and install it in the car and run the rest of the wire but I wanted to give you all a view of how I'm going to wire this vacuum pump so we'll be back when we go put it into the car Alrighty, we finally got out to the Galaxy to put the vacuum pump in. So, what I did is I put bolts through the firewall, excuse me, the fender well, to keep the pump from touching underneath. Same way here, my relay's mounted here, it's grounded, the motor's grounded here. Then we come over here to the vacuum switch. The vacuum switch activates the relay. The power wire runs inside to the ignition switch. It is fused with a 30 amp fuse here. Then we have another check valve, a T going to the booster here, check valve T. And I put another um, check valve here. So this should give him enough vacuum so he can be able to drive the car. Um, which is so funny is this has the same booster as his 55 Chevrolet and there's no problem but this this 390 just isn't making enough vacuum it's only making like 14 inches of vacuum so we had to go for the pump so I showed you how to wire it in the previous video so here it is all installed ready to go all right everybody thanks a lot for watching please subscribe you can always do that in that corner please give me a thumbs up if you like my automotive videos